podcasters and business owners are not really a niche, but when you put the two things together, now you've got somebody that you're serving. That's a specific person. That's a business owner that either wants or has a podcast. So when you do that, it takes it to a different level. And he's able to merge those two worlds. Most hosts never achieve the results they hoped for. They're falling short on listenership and monetization, meaning their message isn't being heard and their show ends up costing them money. This podcast was created to help you grow your listenership and make money while you're at it. Get ready to take notes. Here's your host, Adam Adams. Hey, podcaster. It's your podcast coach, Adam Adams. And I'm honored to have a friend back on the podcast. Alex, I need to look up how many times you've been on. I don't know. It's two times or what, but I need to find out what those episodes are. Before we get started today, we're talking about rebranding. And what's cool for the listener right now is when we talk about rebranding, we are talking about rebranding your podcast. But we're additionally talking about it's kind of aligning things with everything else that you're doing. So if you've got podcasts, if you've got a business, if you're hosting events, you're going to learn some really cool things. And if you're going to host those events, which you probably should if you really want to grow your brand in your space, this is the episode for you. To my editor, go and find any episode that Alex has been on our show and get those listed below. So if you're listening, scroll down now. If you'd like to check out more episodes with Alex San Filippo, you'll be able to find it there. So let's jump in, Alex. You, as we're recording, recently rebranded what used to be called Pod Talks. I think I've spoken at that once or so before. And there's another one coming up very, very soon as we're recording. And hopefully I'll be able to share a little bit of value there as well. So we'll link that in the show notes. But you changed the title of it and everything. And I was like, I loved what it used to be called. And I wanted to hear just kind of your thoughts on the direction of this. So let's talk rebranding of first and foremost, let's start with your event. And if you don't mind, maybe start by why do you host the event, and then we can get into talking about why you rebranded it. Yeah, sure, Adam. Thanks again for having me back, man. I'm honored to be here, and I'm looking forward to having you back one of the upcoming events. I don't know, whichever one I can land you with, <laughs> right? Like, I'm after you and your team. I'm like, whichever one I can get Adam for, I'm in for. He's like, when do you want it? I'm like, anytime. He's ready. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny, a quick side note here. I got to just share this at the beginning because I think it's worth mentioning. You and I finally met in person less than a year ago of time of recording. And I waited a while, but I posted the picture. I just wanted it to be like after the buzz of the event we were at, like kind of settled. I posted that picture and I had people messaging me being like, what the heck? Where did you meet Adam? Like, why wasn't I invited? Like, how did you meet this guy? Like, and asking like all these great questions. And you just have such a good reputation in the podcasting space and also among like a ton of entrepreneurs and business owners that I really respect. So I just want to say thank you again for having me, man. Thank you for letting me know. I had no idea, but I remember you posted that. I was like, that's so sick. Alex is somebody to really look up to and to follow in this space. And when you posted that, I was pretty honored. So thank you. Good stuff, man. All, all right, right, to all the right. event. So I know you like the name Pod Talks. We came up with that because basically to give you an idea of what this event is, it, it's basically like a TED Talk, but for podcasters is the idea. So our event is something where we just have podcast guests and hosts, either side of the mic, we like to say, come in and speak to add value to other people in that space, sharing one really specific niche idea. And the whole reason that this was created is because when we launched podmatch.com, which connects podcast guests and hosts for interviews and does a bunch of other things in between that as well, I realized that the area we were lacking most in was the education. People were wanting to learn more about it. And so I found myself answering a lot of questions and sometimes getting asked questions, Adam, that I really couldn't answer. And I've never been the guy to BS my way through something. So I didn't start being like, I'm pretty sure it's this. I would just straight be like, I actually don't know. Like, you'd have to ask Adam about that, right? Like, that did come up from time to time where I'd actually go find an episode and send it to people. And we still do that. But I just realized there would be value in us having some sort of educational wing ourselves for people within our community that wanted to learn with our community. And so the whole idea just came out of what felt like a necessity at that time to really serve and add value. And that was kind of the idea we took, copying the TED model, if you will, right? And that's really because I learned really well that way. And I was like, I kind of want to, make sure it flows with the way that I personally like to learn. So that was the whole idea of getting it started and launched. Okay. So then recently you decided to switch the name up on, on everybody who got used to the, the old name. Was that scary? Yeah, man. 
Yeah, it, it was. And we rebranded other things too, which I think we'll get into, but like, it's a scary process for sure. And I really liked the name and some other people like you <laughs> also liked it, but it was one of those things. It was like, I realized I found myself answering the question, where does this fit into your brand? And mm. what does it mean? Did other people ask you that or were you just thinking about it? Oh, no, no. That was a regular question. So much so oh. that we actually built out like a text. We use text expander, which is you type in a little code and it spits out a blurb of text, right? You can to responses and other type of thing like that. I love text expander, by the way, like check it out if you're not using it. But I basically created that. I'm like, because we're getting asked this so many times that we had to create something like a standard response to tell people, well, here's what this is. Here's what it means. Here's where it fits in. And it made me realize that like, even though I like it and it makes sense to guys like you and me, I think you and I think pretty similarly. Most people are not like us. And that's why they hire somebody like you because they want to tap into that different mindset that you have. Right. So when it came to that, I'm like, man, I'm explaining this more than it's worth. And before I can convince somebody to even attend, even if it's for free, I have to go through this huge explanation as to what it is and all that. So it was one of those things that I wanted to simplify it and have it more in line with the other things that we do. To me, it was a really tough decision. And I probably sat on it longer than I should have. I like the name. Anyway, that's kind of my thought around that. So what's the new name? Podcasting Made Simple Live. Okay. Talk to us a little bit about what that does. You said one thing. It was a necessity to serve and add value. And I want to switch it around and find out to understand what does it do to your brand? How does it help you? I understand and I love that you're helping them. And I want to think through for our listener who is thinking about maybe starting their own event or whatever, what does it do for them, their brand, their company? Yeah. So real quick, like our podcast is called Podcasting Made Simple. So that's the show. And the show is the replay from the event. So formerly Pod Talks, once it was done, we had 13 speakers in total. That would be the next 13 weeks of content, which is the way that we kind of structured it. So we'd go from Pod Talks to Podcasting Made Simple. Mm. And so many people were confused. They're like, hey, I attended this event and like loved it and all that stuff. And like, did someone post it? What is this? Now that same thing's out. And people weren't complaining about it at all. People actually loved once I explained it. But I, again, I was explaining it. And so we we're just like, you know what this is? This is the live side of our podcast, Podcasting Made Simple. And I know it's a bit of a mouthful, but already it's way more aligned. We had way more people attend. And we got not one question about what it was. And that to me was the clarity that, okay, we did the right thing. So again, for people, it helped them find where they fit into it and what it was. And for us, it simplified the communication back and forth while more accurately delivering on what is it we could do. Because the whole idea is we're actually helping make podcasting on either side of the mic simpler for people. And so that's kind of like where it went from that. I don't know if that quite answers your question. So yeah. it's my first time ever talking about this. It so does. Let it me does, know if I'm, I appreciate if I'm it. off track. So I'm thinking through and... One thing that I didn't understand was that podcasting made simple, the actual podcast. I didn't know that it was solely replays from the events. I had thought that it was a podcast and you used replays from the events. Was it ever the other way that I thought or was it always this way? It's always okay. been that way actually. So, we say the replays from the event, but if you listen to the podcast, because of the way that we do the event, it's pre recorded, it's super high quality. You would never know it was an event replay. Like nothing in it references the event or anything like that. Yeah. And we just wanted that to be the way our content dripped all the way through. We wanted a podcast, but we wanted an event. So I was like, can we somehow do them together and hold it together as our accountability? A lot of people are like, wow, I tell people like this. I'd be like, wow, that's really interesting how you basically funnel all your content through an event and then into your podcast. And every 13 weeks, you repeat it because it's a quarterly event. So, yeah, you know, it's funny you mentioned that I had a, a person who's been on, he's spoken at three of our events and he emailed me the other day and said, Hey, when can I be on your podcast? And I was like, You've been <laughs> on it three times. And I say it the other day, sorry, this was the beginning of the year. That was like the final straw that I was like, You know what? We're rebranding this thing. Like it was that specifically. It was in January when he reached out and that's when we changed it. I'm like, We have to just do this now. Yeah. Out of curiosity, what's different between, and I think I know the answer, but maybe the listener doesn't yet. What's different between the experience of live and the experience of listening to the show? And why would one person do one or the other? And or why would somebody do both or listen to both? It's a great question. We're very driven by community and community building. Like that to me is super important. So the event itself, we built it in Mighty Networks is where we actually host the event. 
We use two apps. Mighty Networks and Demio is the other one. I don't know how to spell either of them. So everyone's on their own. But we use those two things specifically because there's a community element where you can have conversation, you can chat. And so we want to bring people together that want to learn and grow together and have some dialogue, some conversation. So people who get the ticket to the event up to, I don't know, a month before, let's say, they're already having conversation ongoing for that month and meeting people, getting to collaborate with other people that have that growth mindset that want to learn from this same community. So that's a really big point for us is being able to do that. In addition, we bring on... So it'll be me and Jemmy are the co-MCs this entire year and maybe the foreseeable future. And we'll basically kind of ask the, the audience questions, who the people that are there, the community. And when the speaker comes on, we introduce them. We have a little dialogue back and forth, and then we actually stream their video. So their video gets streamed. So the speaker live and the MC, me, would jump off screen. We stream the video. And while that's happening, we ask anyone in attendance to ask their question. And afterwards, we bring them on stage to answer the question, or if they aren't comfortable with that because they're watching it from their home, right? And they just want to be able to have it answered. We'll still answer their question. So they're able to actually drill down even deeper into the conversation. And that's what you don't get with the replay, right? Like you don't get the personal interaction or the community building. That's the big selling point of what it is. It's community building and getting your specific question answered by the person that you may not have access to. Let me clarify that. One thing that I'm absolutely hearing, and this benefit the listener, is if I'm on the live I get to ask my question right to that person instead of just listening to the talk. Correct. And yeah. I have this question or this curiosity. So in the live event, everything is happening. Everything might be recorded. And I'm wondering, when it goes into the podcast form, do you get to hear the Q&A or is it just the talk? just the talk in the actual podcast, but we do have replays for anyone who was in attendance or maybe couldn't make it. There's replays that will include that. And those are available for 30 days after the event. And then at that point, those go into an archive and the podcast itself is literally just the talk. So, I mean, our intro, I think is now like four seconds long and it just goes straight into it. So the whole idea is just like, hey, you're here to hear Adam Adams. This is it, right? Just straight up. That's it. And we try to keep it really to the point from a podcast perspective. I want to bounce ideas off of you, if you don't mind, Um, Please, yeah. at least one. And I'm thinking instead of archiving it for 30 days and then never being able to access it, why don't you funnel people to the website from the podcast experience? So they get to the podcast because they maybe never knew about the live. They just searched for you. You came up. They found you. And the Q&A at the end could become like a bonus thing or a reason why they would go to your website or download some PDF or anything like that. Why wouldn't you or would you consider doing something like that? I had never thought about it. I'm taking notes right now. Um, <laughs> that's why I haven't done it. That never crossed my mind. But to make sure I understand. So let's imagine you're the guest, right? You're the person on my podcast. They listen to it. They're like, man, I really like this. And at the end, I'm basically like to access Q&A and some additional content on this topic Adam shared with us, go here. Yeah, it's like this. Hey, to the listener, there were some really good questions after Adam presented this talk or John or Emily or whomever. There were some really good questions after Emily presented this and we recorded them and they're all saved on the website. Feel free to go down below. The link is going to be there. That way you can access all the Q&A. So if you already had a follow-up question, Maybe it was answered there. Something like that. I'm probably having terrible etiquette as a podcast guest right now. I don't typically have a notepad open, but... Oh, no, you're good. I I got got all my notes here. So that's great, man. Anyway, I don't do that right now, but stand by. (laughs) Yeah, it sounds like it would be cool. So you've rebranded more than just that. So why don't we get... And you choose, Alex, either... This is the first thing you consider, the second thing to do, and the third thing. Like, Why don't you either give us like a couple of steps or a couple of considerations? If our listeners thinking about rebranding something or needs to rebrand in two years from now, they're not even thinking it, how do they go about doing that? Is it a step-by-step or is there like five considerations that they need? I think there's a little bit of both. So I'd like to start with the consideration piece, but move into steps. I'm a pretty practical guy. Um, I think I'm kind of similar to how how you are. Actually, you did a great episode. I wrote down the date that it went live. It was a solo episode. You released it on 5-2-24, episode 476. We're talking about push versus pull sales. 
And you had some great stories and some great practical application on that. So I encourage everybody like that. That in my mind is the future, what you shared. So if you're listening to this and you haven't heard that, go back and check out that episode. But anyway, to kind of give like the high level stuff first. So before I get into steps, but like the consideration phase, I'd call it, it has to start with an internal reflection. Some people want to rebrand because they want something new. And I never suggest that. If it's just because you feel like maybe, oh, I'm not sure what to do next. So maybe I'll just rebrand. I find that to be very tempting. And I see a lot of people doing that with no actual rhyme or reason for it versus maybe they're scared to get into the work that really matters to grow it. And they just want to do that. And I'm not trying to call anybody out by saying this, but I have seen that happen more times than not. Most rebrands are very unwarranted and it's a way to avoid the real work that needs to be done. So when it comes to consideration, you have to really start with some internal reflection as to like why you'd even want to do this in the first place. Some right reasons are when you're internally reflecting, why am I always having to tell people what I do? Why am I always having to explain things that are so simple to me? I thought that I was being clear with this or man, my business and my podcast aren't aligned at all. And at one point that was me. The first rebrand I did with this whole business, you might even remember this, Adam, we were just meeting when I did this, but I used to have a show called Creating a Brand yeah. and that has been changed to Podcasting Made Simple. So if you go to the first 158 episodes of Podcasting Made Simple, they're creating a brand episodes that was for entrepreneurs. Maybe they are entrepreneurs as well, but I started serving podcasters. And so like that was a rebrand. Again, it was a misalignment at that point of where I was going. So the consideration phase in my mind is really just getting back, getting real with why you want to do this. And is there actually a valid reason? Real quick, any thoughts there, Adam, before I kind of jump ahead? Now you did another cardinal sin. You're asking the interviewer questions. No, let me think. Let me think. Because I was just taking notes. I thought you were spitting a lot of good fire. I actually just want to point out one of the things that you said, because in a way it was painful to me. And I think it might be painful to the listener because it probably is true too many times. And you said, maybe they are scared to get into the work that really matters. So essentially they choose to rebrand. And I feel like I've probably done those things or wanted to do those things. And I think that the listener might be as well, because we've had so many episodes of podcasters who come up and we've talked about rebranding a podcast, how to rebrand a podcast, how to let your audience know that you're rebranding a podcast, what you should do if you should cancel one and start another one, all of that kind of stuff. If you delete the old episodes or not, there's a lot of thoughts that go into it. I know you kept your first 158 episodes from creating a brand and they're still active. And I understand that for you, it was a misalignment. And that's what happened to me. I had a complete misalignment. And for you, you kept the 158 episodes and just kept going. And for me, I did it differently. I sold that podcast and I started a completely different podcast that would align with my listener and my goals with the podcast. In short, my first show was truly supporting people that had no money and wanted to get into real estate. And the avatar that I had about real estate investing was to attract passive investors that had a whole bunch of money, but they didn't want to do the work. They just wanted to passively invest with me. And for mine, it was like, man, I really effed this up. Like I really, really made a mistake. And so I sold that one and I started a completely new one. I did do this. I took any episode that was about apartment investing and I repurposed that. But then I got rid of all of the stuff that was about creativity and buying things without your own money so that I could have something like 100 episodes. I had like 400 plus episodes and I used about 100 of them to start the new, that second show. I think it's interesting. And I think the listeners probably gaining some ideas from what you've shared and even my experience selling one. When you asked me that question, I was writing, why do it? And is there actually a reason for it? Because I was in the middle of typing. I want to make sure. Yeah. It's interesting. You talk about like having the wrong show at first and then selling it. Really, if I could go back with creating a brand, that's what I should have done. It was a lot more work to rebrand the show than to do that. Now, if you have a show that's not sellable, which is probably a lot of people. There's nothing wrong with being at that phase. And if you love the content it does serve, then keep the journey. 
my mindset was let's keep the journey of where I've been as well. But the reality is that show was ready. The way I had built it out, SOPs, I had all the proper things done. I think it would have been a very easy show to sell and then start over. What scared me was starting with an audience of zero. But the reality mm. is as soon as I launched, my listenership, anyone who was an entrepreneur, not a podcaster, left, right? So I had a, I don't know what the percentage drop was, but 30 to 70%, let's call it, because I have no idea what it was. But I imagine that's probably something between there I had a drop because it changed from being for somebody to be for somebody else, right? So for what it's worth, I think that was probably a good thing that you did there. But you and Karen Roberts talked about this a lot on your show on episode 477. And you guys talked about like it being ready, fire, aim. When we kind of like launch this stuff instead of ready, aim, fire. And that kind of brings me to the steps I want to talk about, like when it comes to considering a rebrand of a business, an event, a podcast, whatever it might be, we have to think strategically. You can't just go for it and see what happens. Step one, like I said, is, is really that consideration phase, like really sit down and, and think about it. I'm going to interrupt you. Will let's do a quick break. And when we get back, let's go into the steps. We'll break down what to do first, what to do second. That's going to help the listener to be able to really understand if I'm doing this, I already know what to think about. And now let's take a quick break. And then when we get back, we're going to be like, love it. What do I need to do to make sure this happens? We'll be right back. Hey, my friend, as you know, this episode is sponsored by my company, growyourshow.com. We want you to be able to have the best tools at your disposal without costing you a whole arm and a leg. So right now you can get a free list of vetted equipment that like mics, mixers, webcams, sound treatment, editing software, everything that you need. I created the whole PDF with direct purchase links just to save you time and money to help it be more convenient for you. So this free PDF will help you skip all the guesswork. If it's on there, it's vetted and approved by yours truly. And if it's not on there, it's probably not worth the money. So go ahead and get yours at growyourshow.com forward slash PDF. Let's get back into the show. We're with Alex Sanfilippo. I'm so stoked. This is becoming a really good episode, a lot of good value. Alex is from podmatch.com. It's a service that I pay for. It's a very, very affordable. And it's something that I think is necessary. And we're honored to have him on the show. He's rebranded a couple of times, at least once with his podcast, at least once with his event. And that's a little bit about what we're talking about. If you want to rebrand, we're about to get into the steps. We're about to get into this is what you need to do first, and then you do this. And with that said, we've already talked about making sure that you internally reflect, like the consideration of maybe doing a podcast. And he said, not just because you want to do something new. And he said, uh, maybe they're scared to get into the work that really matters. And why am I always needing to tell people what I do is a thing that shows that you might need to do a rebrand. He talked about with his show, it was called Creative Creating a Brand. And he's changed that to Podcasting Made Simple. He had SOPs, but it was misaligned. And so he had to figure out how to do this. And so it's like, why am I really doing this? And is there actually a reason for it? And if there is, let's dive into the step by steps. Alex, what's first? Yeah, I'm excited about this. Like, again, this is a new topic for me to, to get to cover. No one's ever asked about it, but it's been a big part of my life, as you said. So, to me, that pre step again, like doing that internal reflection, consideration phase, right, is so important. The next thing to do is talk to the person that you serve. Who is it that you're actually serving? Who's that avatar for your business, your brand? And if you're like, well, I have a podcast about this, an event about this, and all these other things in between, Talk to each of those people and see if you can find any sort of alignment on their end. And I always think it's best to put it on somebody else before yourself because we lie to ourselves without meaning to, right? But like, I like this color. So the logo needs to be a different color, right? And the reality, when you talk to the person who's buying from you, they're like, I really don't care what color the logo is. The product's great. So you're like, oh, wait, I should actually spend more time on the product, not the logo, right? <laughs> and so you have to really stop and think about all these type of things, but from the perspective of the person that you serve. And so again, if you feel like, okay, I do have a lot of things, talk to all of them, take tons of notes, do your best to really communicate with them every chance you get to just see, is there any synergy here? Like, can I figure out how to put these two things together? A great example is Adam here. Adam serves podcasters, the podcast about podcasting, right? But the people that he attracts are business owners, successful entrepreneurs. So it's kind of merging those two things together. And the reality is podcasters and business owners are not really a niche, but when you put the two things together, 
Now you've got somebody that you're serving, right? Like that's a specific person. That's a business owner that either wants or has a podcast. And so when you do that, it takes it to a different level. And he's able to merge those two worlds. So it's a beautiful example that you have. And so for us, again, we've got to start with talking to people, collecting the data, learning what we can from them, because that's going to be what helps us understand, okay, this is the direction if I'm going to do a rebrand that needs to go in. Okay. So step zero, reflect on consideration. Step one, talk to the avatar that you serve. Don't make it up on your own, but actually give them a poll. Ask them. What do you do after that? The next thing is going to be to actually get strategic with it. So I like whiteboards. I use whiteboards initially for the stuff. It ends up on a computer, but I like having whiteboards to basically, okay, this is what I think I'm learning. Here's all my things, right? And here's where the connecting dots happen. Here's what I keep on hearing people say, but that doesn't align with this brand, this one. It's to get really strategic. And for many of us, strategy isn't necessarily one of our skill sets. And if that's the case, find a friend, family member, a coach, somebody that you trust to come in and basically help you vision board this thing out of what it could be. Because if you skip this step and you don't get into the strategy, it's like, okay, I'm definitely rebranding. I'm just going to do this. I feel like you're going to be doing it again in a couple of years, right? But if you say, hey, let's really sit down. Let's look at this thing for five years strategically. Think about the direction we're going in. Keeping in mind this person we serve who's already given us all this information, where does all this fit? And so to me, that second step is really just sitting back doing the strategy. Listen, I'm, I'm a strategic person. That's sort of one of my, I guess if you look at like strength finders, that's one of my, I think it is my top strength is strategy. But I still bring somebody in anytime I'm doing this because I don't just want to trust myself. And that outside perspective is so helpful. And so a great example of this is just what Adam did with me earlier. Talking about like, hey, why don't you basically have a call to action to get access to the Q&A that was part of the event in your podcast. I'm like, oh, I never thought about that. It's because I didn't have the right person probably help me on the strategy side. Make sure you get that right person though and think strategically. So that to me is that second step. The third one goes right along with that. So I'm just going to roll into it here. The third step is to find the proper verbiage, the way to present what this is that you're doing. And again, maybe find some help. AI might even be able to get you a little bit of the way there, but basically honing out how you're going to describe what you now have as your strategy. So again, you've decided you need to do the rebrand, zero, right? One, you've now talked to the people that you're serving. Two, you've developed the strategy. Three is now to get it really crystal clear from a verbiage standpoint, what it is that you're doing. And that doesn't mean you need to call <laughs> your podcast, the podcast about podcasting, like not necessarily, but it needs to somehow articulate what it is that you do and how it serves that person. And if it's your company or it's like, hey, maybe this product needs to go away, we'll rebrand it into this. Maybe that's something that you need to do. But this is the time to really get clear on the verbiage because as I learned with Pod Talks going to Podcasting Made Simple Live, I went from tons of questions to no questions. That's because it now I was able to figure out the right words to use that my world really understands well. Those are some of the initial steps, definitely. And there's a lot of work in between this. It's the podcast on podcasting. All right. So is there any step after we find the verbiage? Yeah. I mean, it's going to go into... I believe that's when you go into like the full like rollout of this thing. Okay. What do we need to do for the rollout? Let's just say that it happens to be... We weren't aligned. We Maybe we're hosting an event. Maybe we are have our company and our podcast and our event kind of support the company and is as a whole, they all support our listener, our avatar. And today we've decided I've got to change my podcast. I screwed up. I took the time to say, do I actually need to do this? I took the time to say, is there really a reason for this? And I found that there is. And so I'm going to go on step one, ask my avatar. Step two, figure out the strategy and maybe you know get help from a friend or a family member or a coach. And you even said strategy is your big thing and you still bring in somebody. And then we go to step three, we find the proper verbiage. And I guess, correct me if I'm wrong, that means the way that we basically explain the change or explain what we're doing, a sell, sell the new product, the new name. When If this is a podcast that we're changing, what do we do to go about rolling it out? Yeah. At that point, the verbiage, meaning like everything around the actual title of the show, the description of the show, but also what you're going to say to people about the change. Not everyone's like this, Adam, but I think you and I are. Like, If I was to make a change and anytime I have, I've done a very public facing post about it everywhere I possibly can. Even mentioned on the podcast saying, hey, here's why I'm doing this. I realized I caused some confusion. That was never my intent. 
I liked it because of this, but I realized that this is going to be better. This is where we're going. And I'll, I'll share the change everywhere. That's the whole verbiage thing. Like everything you're going to say, everything you're going to do. And that point, just rolling it out. Like if you're going to change a podcast, it's actually really easy, <laughs> which I didn't know. I was like, oh man, what am I getting into? So <laughs> I started looking it up and it was like four sentences. I was like, this can't be it. Went into my hosting provider. It's like, upload a new logo, change your podcast title, change your description and you're done. I was like, oh, for real? Like no way. So like yeah. that will change it from that moment forward. And anytime someone goes and listens to it previously, they'll see the new logo or cover art. They'll see the title, the description change, but the episode itself doesn't. If you want to change that, you need to go back and do that. And the thing is, I, I didn't do anything there. And you really don't necessarily have to if you want people to know the journey of it. The one thing that we're about to do, because our podcast has gotten more and more traction lately, and people are like, hey, what's this creating a brand stuff that's the first 158 episodes? Super good, but like, what is this? What we're about to do is my editor is in the process of doing that. Uh, doing this. We're basically adding, I think it's like a 15 second or 20 second snip at the beginning of every episode. It says, hey, I want to let you know this podcast used to be called Creating a Brand. It's now podcasting made simple. It's for so-and-so. But we want to leave these episodes here for you. Enjoy anywhere where the creatingabrand.com URL is mentioned. Change that to podmatch.com slash follow the same route or the same uh, sub and it'll get you to where you want to go. Here's the episode. It's something along those lines. I think I said a little bit better <laughs> in the actual thing itself. That's the only change I made. And beyond that, we're just leaving the rest of it exactly the same. Currently, I don't even have that in there. And it hasn't caused a huge problem aside from the occasional question of like, hey, why does it say creating a brand, but it's podcasting made simple. So if I could go back, I'd sell it. If I didn't sell it, I would go ahead and just immediately add all those things to it instead of years later now backtracking. Yeah. I got some good notes here on step four, rolling it out. I've got one thing is that you basically went in and you updated your previous episodes. Those, I think it was 158 that I wrote down episodes that were already there for when it was a different brand. And what it sounds like you did is you took the audio, you added a small piece either in the front or the middle or the end that basically says there was a change. This is what the change is. If you get this website, do this other website instead. And you created these new files with mostly the previous content. And then you basically just replaced it on 158 episodes. I'm sure that only took five seconds. So that's one big thing. And the next big thing that I'm hearing that's really valuable, I think, to the listener is you spent the time to go on social media and other avenues. Maybe you're email list, maybe talking to friends and family, maybe your podcast and other, even on your website, which a lot of people are users of your website. And you said, here's the change and quote, here's why I'm doing this. And that helps them to be able to know and understand what's going on. And when we, for example, when you and I got on this call, I'm like, why did you change it? It was so cool already. And then you were able to share, here's why I did that. Now I'm like, oh, that's so brilliant, right? I go from, why would he do this? This is crazy to, oh man, this guy really understands what he's doing. And so that's what happens when we take the time to let our listener know. And Alex, tell me if you are with me or if you've heard of this as well. I certainly have heard of at least a dozen people that rebranded their podcast and never said a dang thing. It was like a bait and switch. It was just like a quick change. And so to hear that you didn't just update the title, the description, and the cover art, but you also took the time to explain it and let people know makes a huge difference to that listener. So I appreciate that you going into that. Prior to the listener checking out the next episode, is there anything else about rebranding that is coming to your mind? Is there a fifth step that we need to know? Let us know. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that back up. It's such an important point to, to humanize yourself, right? Even today, if I don't change the name of my podcast, but I change the cover art, I'm doing a post about the cover art changing. What do you all think? Or more realistically, what I do is I say, here's four options. Which one should we do? Right? Like just a great way to make any little change even is so valuable. I mean, go back to the announcement. One thing I didn't mention is the last episode when it was creating a brand, the very last one before the shift was introducing it. So it didn't come in as a total shock. 
there was like a two week break. It was like, hey, in two weeks, the show is changing. This is what it's going to be called. This is what I'm doing. And here's why. And so I explained it. I explained it on social media, I explained it to my email list everywhere I possibly could. I got it out there. The next thing, it's going to be really hard to get 100% right, even if you do all the strategy. So it's to sit back and monitor, right? Like, where is the friction? Where does this still not feel aligned? What's going on? Do I need to make small tweaks, right? The podcast on podcasting, does it need to be podcasting on podcast? No, obviously. But like, you need to think, like, did I make any small things that need to change that you don't necessarily need to announce? You've got a few weeks while people are learning it to quickly make little adjustments and things like that on the way. I've never hit anything exactly right. I've made those little tweaks along the way in real time. But again, you don't want to like, let's sit it for a year and see what happens. Just be willing to make small adjustments along the way once you launch it, like ready, aim, fire, and then just keep on firing. Like what else can we do? What else needs to happen here, right? And then after that, it's really, again, just look for any sort of misalignment. Anything that keeps on coming as a question is typically, in my mind, a little bit of a flag, like when people ask. And going back to my holistic thing here, like the entire rebrand we've done, Pod Pros for a while was even our, we called it like our parent company. We kind of did what Meta does with Facebook and all their other apps and or Alphabet does with Google and all their other apps, right? I was like, oh, we can do something like that. It caused so much confusion. Our goal right now that we're focused on in this year is to make Podmatch our only website. One login, one website that has everything on it. Not Pod Pros, Podcast Lottery, Podcast SOP. Pod talks. We literally have like nine different things and it caused so much confusion. Even in person, just six months ago as an event, people were like, Hey, I have a question. Do you own this? What is it? Why is it not over here? Right. And so I'm always looking for those things. So the last phase I'd say is just continue to monitor, monitor and look around for what else is, are people saying? Can I make those adjustments or does that need to be another major tweak or something that I do? And so for me, I am fully focused on bringing everything into the pod match name aside from the podcast. And there's SEO reasons for that and some things that are just better to leave those two things separate. They go together, but they are a little bit separate. So we've got Podcasting Made Simple <laughs> and we've got Podmatch. And those are our only two things. And we want people to know these two things go together. So they both mention each other. Beyond that, we won't have anything else in our ecosystem, even though those two things serve in many ways. So again, the whole idea is, can I get my mind wrapped around this whole thing? And if I can, can other people as well? Or are they still struggling? Yeah. I almost heard our listener say SEO reasons. I, as you're like, there's SEO reasons. And the listener's like, give me some insight. What does he mean? Would you mind sharing like one or two reasons why this change and how you're doing it benefits search engine optimization? Sure. I'll give you two things here. The first one is why the podcast has a different name than the website. I met with some SEO experts and they basically explained that if your podcast and website have the exact same titles, then often it's going to cause search engines to compete for which one should be higher ranked. But neither will ever hit the highest rank because now there's two. And so if you can get, let's just put it this way. If you have one brand, but it's a podcast and a website, the maximum you can get combined is 100. So they could both be at 50%. Or if you just have one, then they could both hit 100% with different names. You just don't want the name to be exactly the same. Even if you just add one word, it's fine. But a lot of people are like, call your podcast Podmatch. And I now realize people are like, that's a really bad idea. You're always going to hurt pod matches ranks because it's always going to be competing with the podcast. You don't want them to compete. So I just went with a totally different name that again was a bit descriptive of what we do within pod match. And so that's kind of like that first one. It's a little hack that I learned from a number of SEO people that are really good. On the other side, having all these different websites, I'm working on their individual authority. So I'm doing blogs for each of them. I'm doing this for each of them, right? Like all these different things. Like I'm working hard to get them recognized, talked about. And the more brands you have, the harder it is to get any traction, right? Yeah. So what I decided to do, I'm like, let's try this. So we put the blog is the first thing we moved into Podmatch. So the Podmatch now has a blog. And immediately, all the posts that were on our other websites all started ranking way higher, way faster. I mean, it was like two weeks and these things are hitting like top search results for searches we wanted to be part of. Previously, we were like grinding, trying to get people to link to them and share them. We don't even ask anymore. It's just happening by itself. And that was immediate like, oh man, if everything's in this domain, it's going to grow a lot faster because now we're telling people to talk about one thing not 10 things that we do. Again, you're limiting yourself as competition. You're bringing it all just into your own brand. And those two things alone, I think, make it worth it. So cool. Thank you for sharing. And I want to go back to something that you said, because I've done the same thing. And this is a wonderful strategy for anyone who's rebranding, certainly. Additionally, anyone who's about to launch a show. And 
what's interesting is it also helps us with many other things that we might want to promote down the line. And you mentioned that you said, I almost quote you, <laughs> and even better, here's four options talking about the logo or the podcast artwork. Which one should I do? Now, you know, here I'm rebranding. This is crazy. Here's four options. Which one should I do? And if we talk a little bit about that, it's interesting that when we are the person on the other end, we always want to help. We always want to share our opinion. We always want to support that person. And it actually becomes very challenging psychologically, very challenging not to be part of that, especially when we start seeing two or three or four people giving different opinions. And we're like, no, that's a dumb opinion. Why would you go for logo number one? You know, I've got like four people saying logo number four, which is obviously the best. I've got to make sure he doesn't go with logo number one because four is the best. And so there's social proofing, which is a psychology type thing that makes us need to do that. And what ends up happening is you get a ton of traction on that. Let's call it a Facebook post. You get a ton of traction on that post compared to if you would have just said, by the way, I'm changing the name. You're like, I'm changing the name. I was scared to change the name. And I've got four options for logos. Which one should I do? And then everybody kind of chimes in and you get a lot more algorithms triggered. So a lot more traction and a lot more people knowing about the change. and Additionally, they feel like they're part of the change because they were able to add their feedback, their thoughts. And when you go with their logo, they're like, yeah, I was part of that. I was one of the guys who told him that he needed to do that logo. And so it's pretty cool he chose that one partly because of me. And so there's so much that happens. And I love that you shared that. We've already talked about a lot of things for the considerations. That's step zero if you're going to be rebranding something. We've talked about a lot of things for step number one is talking specifically to your avatar. Step number two, getting strategic. And as Alex said, he's really strategic on his own for step number two, but he still went out and found somebody. He still talked to a coach or somebody to make sure that there's not pieces that he's really missing. Step three, finding the proper verbiage and possibly using AI to support you, to give you that extra traction there. Step number four is roll it out, the title, the description, the cover art, and tell people why you're doing it. And by the way, the four options for artwork, if that happens. And step number five, which is the last step, is while the change is happening, sit back and monitor. Make sure that you can tweak at a time. And Alex said, when he makes a change, it's not always completely perfect. There's always going to be something that needs change or support. And that's why step five is so important to sit back and monitor. We also got a couple of really cool tips and tricks about your website and your podcast possibly competing with each other. And so making sure that you use the SEO to your advantage. And also number two was it's difficult to have five different things and make all of them awesome. But if you put all of your eggs in one basket and watch it like a hawk, as I think one of the famous investors once said, then you're going to be able to really grow that. And you did that, Alex. And when you did that, what did you say? It got twice as much ranking or what was the figure there? I can't even give a figure because it was just night and day. I mean, we were were trying everything we could to get people to backlink to it so it it would grow. We don't do that anymore. Within two weeks, it hits where we want it to be. So it's like, I can't even quantify it really. That's cool. So Podcasting Made Simple is the live event and it's the podcast. And if you want to go to the only website to check out Alex, and I'm one of the people that's a paying customer and I'm grateful that I am. I get a lot more value than how much I pay, but don't tell Alex. I don't want those prices to go up to a million dollars a month, 20 or 30 or whatever they are now is perfect. If you are wanting to do that, you can connect with other people that you can get on their podcast to really gain more exposure for what you're doing. And if you're having a hard time finding guests, this is one of the best places to find guests. My mom started her podcast about a year ago. She's one of the customers. She loves it. And so we share that with a lot of our clients like, hey, this is one of the best places to find a guest or to be a guest. And that's podmatch.com. So 
definitely travel down, scroll down, and you'll see all of those links to be able to connect with Alex on any social that he wanted to connect with you on and his website and his podcast. That's where you'll be able to connect with him. And if you got a few minutes, the next episode is going to be a short episode. And it's something where I've designed and poured into you because I know kind of what you're going through. My goal is to be able to support you to get to that next level. So I'll see you there. You're not alone if you're ready to either get your very first affordable microphone or if you're ready to upgrade your equipment to some legit podcasting studio equipment. Because on all of the forums over the last few months, I'm seeing this all the time. Even my own personal clients that work with my team, they're ready to get that next microphone. They're asking us for it. Additionally, when I'm on discovery calls with potential clients, they're always asking for this stuff. Hey, what mic do you recommend? Hey, what lighting do you recommend? What webcam should I be using? So many questions. And so what we did, my whole team has put together a PDF so that if you're one of those people who is looking to either get your very first affordable microphone or if you're ready to upgrade your equipment to more professional podcast studio equipment, whether it's soundproofing or whatever, we've got you covered by going to growyourshow.com forward slash PDF. And you can download the PDF for free or right there on the webpage is everything that you would have and you don't need to download the PDF. Either way, just go to growyourshow.com forward slash PDF, which will put you to the podcasting equipment that me and my team have personally vetted. I'll see you on the next episode.